Hi everyone, Phil from tech for Techs here. Is your CPU running a little bit too warm? And you also want to add a little bit of jazz inside your case, make it look a little bit nice, but a little bit different as well. Fed up with those standard RGB fans and stuff like that, which just glow and so forth. Well, why not look at this from Aerocool? It's the Mirage L120. There are other versions of different sizes available as well. The price starts at $69.99. Now, what's different is it's got what's called a infinity mirror on the actual water block of the cooler as well as on the fan on the radiator so you've got these two infinity mirrors if you're not sure what an infinity mirror is it's basically it looks like an ongoing series of lights so as you look into it it seems to go on forever it looks like it's going further than the actual cooler is it's a bit hard to describe without showing you some pictures and videos but it is actually a pretty cool effect and it's all designed and done with basically smoke and mirrors is probably the best way of putting it well just mirrors on their own maybe but if you are interested in purchasing this though please click the links in the description below and thanks for supporting the channel Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favour, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well. And that way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos and more content exclusively just for you. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the AeroCall Mirage L120, which is 120mm ARGB, which means addressable red, green and blue, or addressable RGB, some people call it, call it digital RGB, but anyway, it's ARGB liquid cooler. It says RGB addressable, infinity mirror, RGB design. So, the best way of putting it, you've got the RGB on the fan, what's on the reservoir, but on the centre of the fan you've got this sort of a mirror effect and the same on the actual CPU block as well and what it basically does, it makes it look like the effect is going on further than the actual device is so it's sort of like a, a mirror trick where the lights sort of carry on, well not forever, but it looks like they're going on for a long long time, hence the name Infinity. Uh, so it gives you a rough idea, so as, again that's on the CPU block and the centre of the RGB fan there, so it gives you a rough idea. Because this is a L120, this is 120mm, so that's the small design, ideal for fitting in compact cases, or if you don't need a big, huge uh, radiator. On the side of the box, gives you some information, mainly all different languages. On the other side, again, you've got different languages as well. The bottom, there's not much on there, and the top, there's not much. But on the back, it shows you a bit more information about the actual device. As you can see, you've got that infinity mirror design there. It shows you compatible with addressable RGB motherboards. It's equipped with one addressable RGB fan. It's got a micro channel design, copper water block, that's to help it cool down. Low density fins uh, per inch radiator. That means uh, that there's more, you're gonna be able to, because there's more fins, it basically means that it's going to be able to cool down more air. And then you've got high quality Teflon coated tubing. That gives you a rough idea. And you've got all your full specifications right down here and everything you should need. And it fits basically pretty much most motherboards or should I say CPUs on the market. Including 2066, 2011. 1200, 1150X, 775, as well as AMD, AM4, AM3, AM3+, Plus, uh, AM2+, Plus, AM2, FM2, FM1. It won't fit on any, or at least fit in it a traditional way, on any of your larger, like Epic or uh, Threadripper CPUs or anything along that line. Okay, but it should fit most of your mainstream things on the market at the moment. So let's open it up and see what we've got inside. Okay, so this is what you've got inside the box. Let's start off with the least most important thing, what a lot of people won't read and mess it up, because I haven't read it, is the actual manual. It tells you in here all the bits what are in there, how to fit it, and so forth, depending on if you're using Intel or on the reverse side, AMD motherboard. But it shows you how you fit 
all the different versions, the L120, the L240 and the L360, but it should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's have a look what else we've got in here. We've got some thermal paste. It's their own brand, it doesn't have any specific name or whatever, so it should be okay. You've got a few packs of screws on here, as well as brackets, depending on how you're fitting it to your motherboard, depending on if it's AMD or Intel. More screws for your fan, which will attach to the radiator. And this is the back bracket, which will go on the back side of the motherboard, and this usually goes on there to protect the motherboard, but obviously we'll double check the manual with that. And you've also got a thermal paste spreader. I know some of you think these are daft, but it does, they do supply one just in case you don't think they're daft. Right, next you've got the fan itself. Well, no, actually, before the fan, we've got another cable. It's an ARGB cable. I'm guessing this will plug in possibly to the CPU block. Let's have a look at the fan. So the fan has got two cables on it. One is your standard four pin connection for your fan, your PWM fan connector. And then you've got an ARGB double sided cable. So what that means is you can hook up, for example, another RGB device to it when it plugs into the motherboard, for example, the actual CPU block and so forth, so you can daisy chain them together rather than having to need two separate connections. The fan itself, as you can see, is white blades, black surround, it does have a bit, a slight bit of rubberizing in the corners as well, it's not full in the corners on the actual screw holes, but it is actually just in the circle of the outside of the blade or just within the screw holes. You do have that mirror effect on the central part of the fan. Let's peel that off. You can just about see it there. Now obviously it's not lit up at the moment, but you can see the slight rings going round. And actually, it's actually only one ring with a mirror behind it, and because of the way it's designed, it sort of makes it look like it's going on forever. But we'll see more of that when it's plugged in. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you want the details of the fan, they're on the back there. The actual cooler itself is quite light because it's only one radiator or big enough to fit one fan. So let's have a look at the radiator. So you can see it's quite dense. You can just about see through it. You can attach your fan to either side depending on if you want it on a push-pull configuration or depending on how you've got it mounted. You've got these two tubes that go to the CPU block which are Teflon mounted which is pretty good do seem to have a little cap here, that's I'm guessing where you can fill it up, it says warranty void if removed, and that is there. And then you've got the actual CPU block itself, the cabling does rotate for the tubes which are Teflon covered, so you can adjust it how you want and you've got cables coming off of it so let's have a look you've got one cable here which is rgb so that's addressable rgb so make sure your motherboard has a header what supports these otherwise you're going to be uh, uh, a little bit stuck but this cable you would plug into the fan You've also got a power cable there, power the RGB lights on it if you don't have an RGB header on your motherboard. We'll double check that in a few minutes. And then you've got a three pin fan header for obviously powering the pump itself. Let's have a look at the bottom of the base. So it looks like it's copper all across the bottom. Yeah, it's not pre-applied as we've seen. It has got paste which you can use yourself or you can obviously add your own on depending on what you prefer but there you go you can see the base there's quite shiny it does have a few little dimples on there it's not completely smooth but then again that's what thermal paste is for uh, is to make everything meet properly and transfer obviously the heat so that's pretty good and then on the top side you've got your infinity mirror design if i just pull a piece of plastic off you can probably just about see the effect again it's not lit up at the moment but the way it works i'm guessing this will unscrew i might be wrong there we go it has come apart there you go you've got this sort of uh, glass top and then you've got a mirror inside and that is it and then there'll be an led light what shines around there 
and then because of the mirror and the way this works on top of it, it sort of reflects and gives you that infinity effect. Let's see if we can get it back on. There we go. So it does twist and come off. Okay, we've got the water cooler all set up. As you can see, the fans are going and the lights for the infinity mirror effect are going as well. You can probably see how the lights go on forever, but I'll put some B-roll and some pictures so you can see a little bit better. But in basics, if you don't have an ARGB connection on the motherboard, you can power the lights via a SATA power cable and hooking them up to each other and you will get these effects. Unfortunately, you can't change the effects or anything, so you will be stuck with this sort of a rainbowy, wavy effect. But saying that is better than nothing. Now, if you want to control it through your motherboard, you can do. You just basically disconnect the cable, what connects these two together via the SATA, um, so it sends the power to light both up into the motherboard instead, and away you go. You can control it via your normal controller. Uh, through your software on your motherboard. Okay, regarding the effects on the water cooler, there's lots of different options you can do depending on your motherboard or your controller you're using. Again, if you don't have one, as we said, you can hook it up so it will work in sort of a wavy, rainbowy effect, uh, but you will not be able to change the effects. But if you do have a controller on your motherboard with an ARGB connection on your motherboard or you've got a special controller, you can then change the effects depending on what your motherboard allows. For example, static, pulsing, flashing, colour cycling. Digital wave. And obviously quite a few different options depending on what your board is able to do and what colours obviously you want. So you can choose purple, pink, blue, yellow and so forth. And so on. But as you can probably see, when we stick this on, let's put digital wave on, it's probably the easiest way. If you look closely at the centre of the fan, and the same with the CPU block, you can see the lights. It sort of goes on forever. It's as if it looks like you can put your finger all the way in there, like there's a big hole with lights going all the way in. You can't, because it's just like a plastic glass top to it. Um, it's just the way the obviously the effect works. It makes it look like the effects going on a lot further than the actual cooler or the heat sink or the block is actually doing. So it makes it look like it's going on forever. Hence the name Infinity Lights or Infinity Magic or whatever it is you want to call it. Infinity Mirror is the correct name. Okay, down to testing. In basics, all testing is done on the same machine, with the same version of Windows, with the same version of programs. We disable internet access, so no programs, updates, or anything can be installed, or updates what can affect any of the results. All background tasks which are non-essential get disabled, so again, they will not affect the testing. The testing room has air conditioning slash heaters built in to keep the temperature at 18.5 degrees Celsius. Also, decibel levels are at a steady 45.6 decibels. When testing things like fans, we set the speeds at 50% and 100% and not auto, because obviously if you've got something set at auto, it will adjust the fan speed to up and down to adjust the temperature to the optimal temperature, so it can affect results. So we set the fan speeds at set uh, speeds like 50% and 100%. All testing is done on a 10700K i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM, as well as a FireCuda SSD and the same motherboard and all the other components are the same for every single test. Full specifications are in the description. Okay, so down to the results. Here you can see at 50% fan speed at 0% load, which basically means the machine was sitting there doing nothing, we were getting 21 degrees Celsius. With the fan set at 50% and the machine running at 100% load for 30 minutes, which basically means the fan was stuck at 50% speed, but the machine was working as hard as it possibly could, we got 66 degrees. The next test was pretty much exactly the same, apart from instead of 50%, the fan was running at 100% and we got 50 
59 degrees Celsius. And then when we overclock the machine to 5.1 gigahertz, again running at full load with a fan running at full load, we were looking at 78 degrees Celsius in total. So how loud was it? Well, at 50% fan speed, we got 49.1 decibels. In basics, that's barely louder than the rest of the components. So it didn't really make much of a difference to the sound levels of the machine. But when we got to the fan running at 100%, it did jump up to 58.3 decibels, which is quite loud, but then again, no louder than any other water cooler or cooler on the market, which would be running flat out at 100%. And again, in most cases, your machine will never be running out at 100% load for a constant amount of time, unless you're really doing some heavy rendering, or you're playing a game which is a very CPU intensive. So in conclusion, well first of all I wish Aerocool would have sent us a slightly bigger unit, so for example the L240, so we could have compared it against other water coolers we've tested it in the past from different manufacturers, so it would have given us more of a, a, a comparison as how good it is compared to others. But saying that, even the L120, which is a small cooler, was able to cool down a top-end i7 processor with ease don't get me wrong when it was getting overclocked it was getting a little bit toasty but still not as bad as i've seen some air coolers on the market so the l120 would be ideal for say a smaller case possibly even a lower end processor like an i3 or an i5 ryzen 3 or 5 processor rather than the top end ones but saying that it's still capable of cooling down no problem most cpus on the market on top of that it's got a unique look to it it doesn't look like your traditional standard rgb where it's just basically a fan rotating round changes colors or a little led strip what changes colors this actually has sort of that well infinity mirror effect where it looks like the led lights are going on forever into well infinity and beyond let's say and it gives it that unique look so it doesn't just look like every other cooler on the market we're saying that it's a very good cooler, very good price, and it looks pretty good as well. So, yeah, I can't do anything but highly recommend this product. Thank you for watching this video, everyone. It's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel, and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>